Congress. Well, well thank you, Mr. Chairman. I won't, I won't take very much time. I, I just, um, you know, as I said during my opening, um, I, I think this is an awful bill. Um, that is just page after page of empty talking points with no real solutions. Um, you know, instead of actually solving problems, this bill actually creates problems. I think it, 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 it does, it, it eviscerates our asylum process. And with respect to Chairman McCall, um, the asylum part of this bill comes out of the Judiciary Committee. Um, and I don't know whether Mr. Castro wants to address that. It's, it's, I, just, I want the record to be clear what we're, we're talking about here, what's in this bill. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ranking Member. And look, I know how much hard work uh, Chairman McCall has done, for example, on getting Afghans, you know, families that had relatives over there and, and helping evacuate them and being serious about policy and so forth. But this, is, this bill was in several titles and was the work of three committees. So when I was referring to the bill, I was referring specifically to the fact that Title II limits asylum and Title VII limits parole, uh, both outside of what we did in foreign affairs. Uh, so that is something that has to be resolved, I think, with this piece of legislation, because perhaps there is some internal conflict among those titles. Thank you, and, and you know, and you know, and, and, and as I said before, this bill won't stop drugs from getting into uh, America because uh, drugs like fentanyl are coming through legal po points of entry. Uh, not via uh, migrant uh, seeking migrants seeking asylum, uh, and again, I just I can't resist uh, from pointing out that uh, in the debt ceiling bill that uh, my friends all voted for a couple of weeks ago, um, it would cut the CBP's budget by four billion dollars. You know, I mean, weakening the ability to prevent drugs from crossing the border uh, by laying off 2,400 officers. I mean, I uh, you know and. Uh, that, you know, if, the, if this plan were enacted, there were estimates that more than 350,000 grams of fentanyl could be led into this country. That's over 200 million more fatal doses of fentanyl hitting our street, streets uh, thanks to these cuts that my friends voted for if, in fact, uh, they move forward. Um, half or more of the undocumented people uh, are overstaying their visas, not crossing at the southern border. Um, and this bill is quite simply a way, I think, for some to try to score political points, which I hear over and over and over again in some of the, uh, by demonizing immigrants. And I want to emphasize the point that Mr. Castro made, that uh, language has consequences. Um, and uh, we see the impacts of that language and those consequences every, every day. And it's quite frankly tragic, and it has to stop. But let me just get into just a a couple of things that, you know, during the markup of the bill, uh, Democrats introduced an amendment allowing for Ukrainians to continue to be paroled into the United States until it is safe for them to go back. I mean, that's all it said. Um, so if you're from Ukraine and your home has been destroyed thanks to Putin's war of aggression, you can stay until it's safe for you to go back. The Biden administration started a U for You program that helps save Ukrainian lives. And it seems to me my Republican friends want to undo this program. So we gave Republicans an opportunity to correct the mistake, uh, to allow the administration to continue using parole for Ukrainians who are fleeing Putin's war crimes. And Republicans voted no. Uh, they voted to send them back into harm's way. And by the way, uh, Ukrainians don't qualify for asylum because the restrictions are so narrow. So, Mr. Jordan, let me, let me direct your attention to Section 701 of the bill, page 142, which reads in part, the Secretary of Homeland Security may grant parole to any alien who is a national of the Republic of Cuba and is living in the Republic of Cuba. Uh, so, for some strange reason, you, you don't want to use parole for Ukrainians, but you do want to use them for Cubans who are, according to this, are exempt from all restrictions that apply to every other nationality uh, in the rest of the title. So um, it just seems kind of strange to me. Can you explain why? Uh, we just kept the Cuban Family Reunification Parole Program in place. It's been a longstanding program, so we kept that in place. Anyone else from around the world, it's a case by the law is the law. It's a case-by-case -case basis, and the administration can use that on a case-by-case -case basis. That's what we have in the legislation. So Afghanistan under the Taliban seems 
to, to be a worse life for people in Afghanistan than in Cuba. Um, why, aren't, why aren't they carved out for humanitarian parole? Again, or, we, or for that matter, why isn't the Afghan Adjustment Act included in this bill? Again, we, we, we stuck with what, what the law is. The, law is the, the Cuban plan has been in place for a long time. We, we kept that in place. Others, it's a, the, the law says case-by-case case basis. We went back to that. Well, I mean, I mean, you're writing a law here. Why not, why, why not add Venezuelans um, or Nicaraguans? We had a long debate about that. Yeah. And, and maybe why, maybe or, we'll debate or, it more. But or, you're or, telling or, me what's in or, the bill. Or, I'm just telling you why. Yeah, or, sure. No, I'm just, I mean, I, it just seems that this, this, is an, this is an example kind of, a, of selective compassion. That you know makes one wonder why. I would argue it's adherence to the rule of law. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, you know, but Biden it, it, which, 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 which we're treating we're treating um, you know one group of nationals very differently from others um, from countries that quite frankly are experiencing far worse human rights abuses, Mr. Nash